Hi everyone, in this video we study the hydroboration oxidation reaction. In this reaction, we isolate an alcohol. H and OH are added across the double bond. This reaction is carried out in two stages. First, we treat our alkene with borane, BH3, in the solvent THF. THF is a cyclic ether with the structure shown here. It serves to stabilize the borane molecule as it is quite reactive. The product of our first step is a trialkyl borane. This alkene bonds with boron. So we'll have this five carbon chain attached to boron three times, as the name implies trialkyl borane. This trialkyl borane is treated without isolation with water, sodium hydroxide, and hydrogen peroxide to produce our alcohol. So step one, we produce the trialkyl borane. Step two, oxidizes that trialkyl borane to an alcohol. When this reaction is carried out in the lab, we can analyze our product mixture to find if one or more constitutional isomers are produced in excess of the other. What we find is that our major product is the less substituted alcohol and our minor product is the more substituted alcohol. If we compare this to the acid catalyzed hydration mechanism, we would find that the regioselectivity is the opposite. So synthetically, we have access to now the less substituted alcohol and the more substituted alcohol simply by changing the reagents. The regioselectivity here, where the OH added to the less substituted carbon, is sometimes described as anti-Markovnikov, where it doesn't follow Markovnikov's rule. Let's look at some experimental data to further understand the regio and stereochemical outcomes of the hydroboration oxidation. In our first example, we have 2-butene. This alkene is equally substituted on both ends. We have a secondary carbon and a secondary carbon. It is also a symmetrical alkene, so adding my OH to the one side or the other does not change the product. It is one constitutional isomer. In terms of the stereochemistry, our product analysis shows us that we get two enantiomers in equal amounts. This reaction produces a racemic mixture. These two enantiomers in equal amounts. So this example is neither regioselective nor stereoselective. We do not produce one constitutional isomer in excess of another, and we do not produce one stereoisomer in excess of others. Now let's look at our second example. Here we have an alkene that is differently substituted at each end. So we have the regioselectivity of adding my H and my OH in such a way that the OH group is on the less substituted carbon. How many stereoisomers are possible with this product that we produced here? There are two chiral centers produced in this reaction, so there are four possible stereoisomers in this family. When we isolate our products, we find that only two of those four possible stereoisomers are produced. The H and the OH have added to the same face of that molecule. They can add from behind, or they could add from the front. That alkene is planar, so adding from the front or back is equally probable. This reaction produces a racemic mixture again. This example of the hydroboration oxidation reaction demonstrates the stereoselectivity of the reaction. When we have four possible stereoisomers, only two of them are produced. The H and the OH have added to the same face of the double bond. This type of addition is known as a syn addition. The stereo and regioselectivity of the hydroboration oxidation reaction make this an important reaction in organic chemistry. Chemist H.C. Brown worked this out in the 1950s, and he was later recognized by his receiving the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1979. In a later video, we will study the mechanism to explain why this reaction is regio and stereoselective. Thanks for watching.